This video topic is probably one of the most important topics that spans beyond chemistry, and that's the role of understanding SI units, what they mean, their prefixes, and how they compare to other unit systems. I personally think that understanding units is one of the most important fundamentals to any major where you have to use numbers, whether you later go on to pursue engineering, computer science, biology, or even finance, accounting, economics, and so on. Units are what we use to measure, track, and communicate the world around us. Specifically, it's the common language we use to communicate things like mass, temperature, time, amount, energy, power, and speed. So it's really important to have a consistent way of expressing these values. In a previous video, we talked about the Kelvin unit of temperature being what is used in chemistry due to its ties to particle vibration. But in common everyday life, we use the Celsius degree to see if it's cold outside. You might even use the Fahrenheit scale if you're in the US or you're following a culinary recipe. This is a common example of the same thing, being temperature, communicated by three different units. The SI system, which stands for International System in French, has the goal to standardize these units so that we all talk in the same language when referring to units. The SI system is made of seven basic units, which are time, defined by the second, length, with the meter, mass with the kilogram, temperature with Kelvin, amount with a mole, and luminosity with candela. Some of these units are very familiar, like the second, the kilogram, and the meter, but there are some units like the candela that you may not have encountered yet. For chemistry, the most important units to be familiar with are the kilogram, the Kelvin, the second, the meter, and the mole. In fact, the mole is so important that we will cover it in its own video. Now you might be thinking, what about all the other units, like the force unit of Newton, or the energy unit of Joule, or what about the pressure unit of Pascal? Why aren't they part of this list? And the truth is that those are derived units from the seven basic units. So a Newton is just equal to a kilogram meter divided by a second squared, and a Joule is just a kilogram meter squared divided by the second squared. So think of these seven SI units as building blocks to the other units. Even some basic units, like the volume, are also derived units. It becomes more apparent when you realize that the cubic meter is a derived unit of three dimensions of the length unit. Now you might want to measure the length of your body, or the thickness of a pencil eraser, or maybe even the distance between two planets. In these cases, you would use different scales of the meter unit, such as the standard meter, the millimeter, and the kilometer. These prefixes that precede the unit indicate the scale. So one kilometer is 10 to the 3, or 1,000 meters, and one millimeter is 10 to the negative 3, or 0 0.001 meter. These prefixes essentially help grab the scale of the measurement without having to write very large or small numbers. This is a table showing the prefixes used for different magnitudes of scale. You might already be familiar with some of these. Now, some units don't really make good use of those prefixes. Like, 1,000 Kelvin isn't really referred to as a kilokelvin, or a thousand seconds isn't really referred to as a kilosecond. Even though it's technically right, it isn't commonly used in real life, but you will sometimes see milliseconds or microseconds used as a unit of time measurement. But there's also the curious case of the kilogram, which is the standard unit of mass instead of the gram without the prefix, and that's a story I encourage you to do some independent research on. So this brings us back to the other units that exist in the world. If we have standard units recognized by the majority of countries and scientific communities, why are there still hundreds of other units? It's a complicated and controversial issue, but just like we saw with the temperature example, different units of the same property can have different purposes. You might use the Fahrenheit scale for cooking, Celsius degrees to understand the weather, and Kelvin to study a chemical reaction. Another good example is the property of power. For batteries, you might use the unit of watts, which is derived from the SI units. But then you might use imperial horsepower for an engine. And the air conditioning industry even uses the power units of tons of refrigeration, which is the rate of heat transfer that results in melting one ton of pure ice for 24 hours. Even though it's a completely strange unit, it is specifically used in that industry, and you can see them online in product descriptions. And it's for that reason that I think that all units serve their purposes and I've come to understand how they can be helpful in specific situations. So whenever you encounter a weird looking unit, my biggest tip is to understand what category it belongs to and to learn its conversion factors. That way, wherever you go, you'll be able to effectively communicate any property. This video should give you a better understanding of the SI system of units. 
that is composed of seven base units that assign a unit for seven different properties we observe in physical sciences. We combine those units to create more complex units called derived units, and we can also use prefixes to indicate the scale of the measure relative to its base SI unit. As practice, try seeing if you can figure out which base SI units are needed to derive the unit of speed and the unit of density.